a very warm welcome to everyone who's going to watch us today or the next time or any time that they're going to watch us in the future even after the results have come out of the results or the result or or whatsoever impact our uh, youth speaker is going to make on this platform we are welcoming mr rishi vanjas raghavan ji a co-founder and a governing council member of the bangalore nam nirman party we have read about you beyond bangalore and that's when i wanted to connect with you because the revolution that you are starting in bangalore is at the time of this place i mean it's required all over india when alternate politics and youth is coming directly other than the mainstream political parties and you know that's how change should be made so we're welcoming thank you so much mike ji for for inviting me having me actually it's a really good surprise that even outside bangalore you are hearing about us so thank you so much for uh, you know uh, inviting me for this today okay rishi because uh, i was uh, going through you and your articles and everything else the buzz that you are making you are very young at this age right so how did this idea of uh, starting the youth wing of the party or joining politics at your age uh, begin i mean you could have so, so i think uh, business anywhere but why politics no interestingly business and economics is a passion of mine because my undergraduation was in economics and finance so i was in delhi for 3 years i studied at ashoka university and that is my specialization uh, but um, around that time uh, when i was looking back at what is it that i'm really passionate about uh, it felt like um, you know doing something that revolves around people around communities making lives better was something that came to me naturally of course it wasn't a conscious choice uh, because my parents don't come from any political background or even a social service background per se uh, i come from a middle class family in bengaluru i was born brought up here uh, i studied science um, you know math uh, preparing for engineering because i love math i love quantity subjects but somewhere you know towards the uh, end of my 12th grade when i was looking back i used to see that i was always interested in politics in news in discussing policies uh, even though i had never formally studied any of that so i think that was uh, an indication that i am interested in this field so this was phase 1 uh, jab main college gaya aur ashoka university mein pad raha tha uh, tab wahan student politics jo tha usme i participated uh, wahan par uh, student election ke liye i i contested uh, aur uske baad whatever student life uh, initiatives that were there i started taking on that so it was not like a conscious decision ki uh, i am going to join politics and be there in politics but it naturally happened so once i was uh, successful in the student union uh, level where you know in an election i got the highest number of votes uh, than before and some of these things just came naturally then i started looking at uh, how can i make a larger impact so while i was living in delhi i got the great chance of working with uh, three major national parties their elected representatives so i spent 2 uh, years looking at uh, the different ideologies different types of individuals just learning observing working no bias of ideology no personal agenda nothing in it for me no gain apart from the uh, only, uh, you know apart from the idea of understanding the system and getting that experience so that's what i did after all of this uh, to conclude this answer jab main wapas bangalore aaya padhai ke baad Um, यहाँ पर मैं मास्टर्स शुरू करने वाला था नेशनल लॉ स्कूल में मास्टर्स इन पब्लिक पॉलिसी सो दैट इज व्हाट आई एम फिनिशिंग राइट नाउ बट एट द सेम टाइम आई स्टार्ट रियलाइजिंग दैट आफ्टर वर्किंग एट द नेशनल एंड स्टेट लेवल दैट एट दोज लेवल्स वी एज आउटसाइडर्स आर एक्चुअली वेरी इनसिग्निफिकेंट जब आप कोई पोलिटिकल फैमिली से नहीं आते कोई फाइनेंशियल बैकिंग ऐसा नहीं होता है तो नेशनल uh, स्केल पे कोई भी इम्पैक्ट करना बहुत मुश्किल होता है वो मैं सीख चुका था तो आई थॉट दैट if i really want to make a difference and be relevant why not care about my own city where i'm you know born and brought up here i am a kannadiga i uh, you know understand the issues of people here so why not solve uh, problems that are there locally so this was the idea and at that time bengaluru navanirmana party bnp uh, had started off and i joined in the very early days and we realized that local governance is where there's a real impact uh, for a lot of youngsters lot of outsiders so we can speak more about this in detail later on but this was the story on how i started and how i got here see rishi i am so glad that you found your calling or maybe you know you actually listen to your instincts and your calling right how hard was it for you to convince your parents or your family members to actually come into mainstream politics because i don't think so for a bright young uh, guy like you your parents would agree for you to just join politics right yeah the challenge was uh, a little different it was not with joining politics but rather um, throughout my schooling i loved math and science right so mai aapko bol raha tha ki 
ठीक है, आई आई वांट वांट टू टू गो दिस बिल्ड सो सो एंड सो सो प्रोडक्ट प्रोडक्ट मैं मैं इस तरह का कंपनी कंपनी शुरू करना चाहता तब मैं सोच रहा था कि कि मेरे पास ऐसे कोई नहीं है यू नो वर्क इन और बिल्ड सो सो एंड सोसाइटीज एंड लाइक पॉलिसी तो द हार्डेस्ट थिंग अबाउट कन्विंसिंग पेरेंट्स वॉज ऑलमोस्ट ओवर नाइट और रेदर इन पीरियड ऑफ टू टू थ्री डेज एंड फ्यू वीक्स आई I had to tell my parents ki look I actually don't want to study engineering um but I want to do something in social science or I had no idea about it I had no idea about Ashoka University where I went to study or social science or DU uh, engineering ke alawa mujhe aur kisi ke bare mein kuch bhi nahi pata tha us time pe so the challenge there was um, telling my parents ki after preparing after being good at something uh, spending so much time money energy in it I don't want to do it so that was the challenge but there on um, uh, you know my my parents are such that when they see consistency uh, then they are willing to support so after that they saw me showing uh, you know a constant interest for 5 6 years in social sciences and serving people you know building policies then i worked with uh, uh, some uh, national politicians who you know my parents had no idea about as in we couldn't even imagine ki i can get connected to someone at such a high level and work with them so they started seeing that my uh you know work was speaking for itself and because of that i started getting these opportunities tab my parents thought ki okay this must really be a special opportunity so to conclude uh, this part my father tells me even today that um, you know when he was growing up he never had these opportunities he had to take care of a family um today i don't have such obligations yes my parents uh, you know cannot support me in my political endeavors beyond a point but they can take care of all my requirements give me a comfortable life so my father says that uh i in fact have to maximize this opportunity and make the best use of it so today they are very supportive and uh, you know they help me out on this journey may may you live up to their dreams rishi you mentioned while you were in delhi you had the opportunity to work with three political parties right in what capacity and i mean how did you connect with them sure uh, uh, just uh, speaking generally without taking too much names uh, i research wing Uh, in around uh, 2018 end may they had just started off preparing for the 2020 election so they had put together a team of youngsters and researchers uh, so it was just in the beginning of their campaign that i started working as an intern which, which uh, for 3 4 months aap i'm talking about aap i'm talking about aap so that was the first uh, time i worked uh, you know with uh, another party of course uh, in and around that i had worked with a karnataka education minister so when i was in my 12th grade i wanted to give some recommendations i had written some letters and um, the karnataka education minister's office actually called me back saying who is this kid who so enthusiastic about giving suggestions why don't you meet us and explain so i explained to them from the 12th grade students point of view so that was a congress minister who i had worked with and kept in touch with later on uh, after that um, after the 2019 lok sabha elections um, i worked with a a uh, young bjp mp for one year and you were asking how it was through a cold email so after the tw- 2019 lok sabha elections what i did was i wanted to spend my summer working with an elected representative i didn't know who will reply to me so i chose 10 15 representatives wrote a personalized email to each one of them saying uh, not like you know i'm a, i'm a fan and please give me this opportunity take me aisa koi email nahi but very to the point saying this is my background this is how i can add value to you in return i want nothing i want to make a difference and contribute uh, so please give me this opportunity so it, it so happened that one out of all the emails that i sent you know i got a reply back i started working with them i became part of the core team in very little time through that opportunity i you know uh, ha- happened to work with uh, almost 6 to 7 union ministers at that time on railways housing and urban affairs uh, a lot of people from the bjp ecosystem as well so by the end of um, you know finishing uh, you know my tenure uh, in that office i had worked with almost all parties all levels mp level uh, minister level mla level so i think when i was starting off i could have never planned it but now when i look back in retrospect it's like i can join the dots ki 
हाँ ये इस सब तरह का एक्सपीरियंस मिल गया इस प्रोसेस पे and and may this experience help you in your endeavors over there in bangalore right down south so uh, rishi how did the idea of your bangalore nam darman party came and how did you happen to join this party and why only this party right correct so after looking at all the national parties as i said um i did realize ki our contribution uh, can you know not be very meaningful beyond a point and i also feel ki at the state and national level there are some inspiring leaders the, who are you know come from a good background who have done like good work who we can learn from so i i realized that where the biggest vacuum exists is actually at the local governance level today even the average educated citizen does not know that there are actually three tiers of governance which are not one below the other but independent of each other the national level mp level is one the state level cm level mla level is the other but this local body election that is there the municipal corporation election is very important because when i started looking about it in bengaluru in my own city you won't believe it bbmp which is bengaluru's corporation spends 10000 crores every year that's an insane amount of money it's the almost the second highest after mumbai uh, so much money that goes into just local infrastructure maintenance yet for 3 plus years they have not published a full audit uh, there is no transparency there is no accountability at the state and national level you can't escape these things because there's a lot of scrutiny at that level but at the local level is where uh, you know the quality of candidates is poor their intentions are not in line with you know nation building so it's actually a very big problem and when i was researching this problem i realized that someone had started bengaluru navanirmana party with with the same ideas that i had had in my mind uh and how this party started was that uh, we tell people that we are the only political party in the entire country and perhaps even the world which is focusing on just one city that is bengaluru and one tier of governance which is local governance which means come what may we will not go outside bengaluru and we will not fight the mla and mp elections election commission ko humne likh ke de diya hai in our registration we are formally registered political party with the election commission with a hyper focus so you can say that this is a different kind of political startup where we don't tell people uh, ideals saying that oh we are going to make the system corruption free we are going to transform politics in india we are going to change people's lives so this is not a party of making promises and being idealistic and you know talking about things not in our control but a very practical focused goal and the people who have come together are also like that people who have been working on bengaluru civic issues for the last 1 to 3 decades and have realized that uh, what's the point of always giving advice saying this is the right thing to do uh, when no one actually follows it whereas you yourself can get into sis- into the system and do the right thing and the beauty is at this level of elections right um, we are being very practical to win a ward you can win even with 5000 to 8000 votes which means you don't need a large narrative it's not like national elections may lakhs of votes chahiye hota hai aur bahut machinery chahiye funds chahiye uh, aisa nahi hai the scales are very low uh, locally when we have these people who have done a lot of work who are well known in our areas uh, we are hopeful that um, we will be able to build a very strong campaign and of course it's not for one election right now there is one election coming up uh, maybe in the next few months but this is more of a long term uh goal ki when if we keep doing this we keep winning a few wards showing our effort uh, sooner than later we will be able to take the council and introduce you know large scale local governance reform that's the idea of bnp see it's a very different idea for the first time i am also listening and hearing because i have a expertise in political parties and politicians absolutely but somebody telling that we will only stick to the local civic elections right and of a particular mm-hmm. city not even a state is a big thing mm-hmm. right i mean beginning with a focus thing that we don't have to go beyond that i mean in long run will be beneficial for you because a lot of political parties that they start they ne- really never know their goals right what their goals are what they stand for even nations don't know what their defense policies or foreign policies are right but beginning correct, that's correct. very different about you so how are you uh, uh, turning this because bangalore has a lot of youth right and even if you people turn it into a people's movement that you are trying to do and to the extent have managed but you have still not reached the threshold or the escape velocity of this movement that needs Correct. to reach the every youth that there is but there is the potentiality responsibility completely lies with you people and you can do it because the youngest mp is also from bangalore itself right youngest member of parliament 
so how are you connecting it and making it a people's movement and connecting to the uh, not only the people who are joining your organization but the people who are going to vote for you correct you are absolutely right we have not um, scaled it up to the extent uh, that we need to uh, but what we have been approaching this as is uh, before you know building really high you first have to build really deep so that has been the focus in the last 2 years uh, we have started building the roots and the foundation of the organization so in the last 2 years not even one word of our core messaging and philosophy has changed which means that we are really true to what we started off uh, thinking we have been talking to people one on one uh, what we have done is in the different wards of bengaluru 198 wards currently we have started identifying local people working at the absolute underground level uh, building committed volunteers who understand who you know someone has to really understand what bnp is about so we have been doing that and in the last 2 years uh, we have reached almost 20000 volunteers and it's it's amazing which is uh, different levels of active um, activeness of course i'm not going to say all of them are going to be out on the streets but there are you know, different supporters who help us say online spreading our messages there are other people who come on the ground organize events some people who donate uh, because we are a completely crowd funded party so these people across uh, you know organized across uh, different groups so this foundation has been built uh, till now we have not spent uh, any big money on marketing advertising promotions to people and that is the reason why we have um, uh, only to a limited extent been able to reach out to the people but this was a very conscious decision once we have our framework ready and when the election is coming we will of course have limited uh, resources because yes we will be raising um um you know we are also by the way the only political party which is transparently putting out our budget in public it's going to go on our website in a few uh, days till date we have uh, raised about 1 crore uh, we expect to raise uh, you know a, a couple more at least in time for the election we are completely transparently putting out our budgets uh, it's not like we are spending lot of money but whatever is there we are you know building a res- uh, respectable campaign so for all of these things when the election comes we will really look to accelerate and the election itself will be an opportunity for us to take it wide because uh, earned media jo hota hai wo election time mein hi milta hai so we believe that we have to be there once uh, contest uh, show case our people to the uh, the entire electorate and then we will grow because um, uh, so many times uh, people prefer to vote for those who stay in there for the long term so we are not expecting to make a revolution in one go but this election for us is all about identifying our core people core philosophy core ideological people who tomorrow will not jump to any other party because there's a better opportunity or something because these are people who care just about bengaluru just about this level so that is what uh, we are doing rishi i am feeling very inspired when i am talking to you but then i will also narrate an incident from the uh, freedom movement that india was going through in the 1947 bhagat singh and sukhdev and rajguru were all being uh, set on a trial so they were uh, reciting the press asked them in the court how did you guys make the bomb so one mm. notion was that you know we will not tell how we made the bomb but then bhagat singh and other mm. guys decided that we will tell in the press how we made the bomb so everybody can make a bomb right so mm. that's how the word spread now when i started decoding elections i was speaking to a lot of youth like you because they didn't have any party right so suppose my first podcast mm-hmm. was with mr hitesh who was a member of the uh, vote wapsi or uh, call like call your vote back uh, moment and he mm-hmm. contested elections but these guys these flames uh, die down uh, rather than uh, being provided with the support right but because these guys didn't have the knowledge or the resources or the support of the people that uh, i mean you have earned or you are building up right so you have said to me that you have reached almost 20000 volunteers right and you have earned 1 crore rupees for a new political party to raise 1 crore rupees is a very big thing and congratulations on that but i want to what i ask is how are you reaching these people how are you doing your outreach because you don't have earned media right how are you doing the crowd funding so that the other people out everywhere in the world can make efforts in the steps that you have shown and they will in in like a like a mosaic they will in fact strengthen you and that will they will rise together absolutely uh, so we have um, now that we are sure that our foundation is built as an organization we are progressing from version 1.0 to version 2.0 now where uh, now our focus is on outreach uh, so most of our people who are coming through are actually people who are active in the civic space so they are civic problem solvers which means in every ward there is a resident welfare association there will be apartment welfare association there will be associations of people 
who have been taking up local issues around their area solving that uh, getting the required support for that so what our party has informally become is actually an amalgamation of all the different civic groups uh, associations across bengaluru and that is how it has happened unofficially because these are the people who really care just about the city and local politics and nothing else right so um this has been one of the main ways in which we have been attracting uh, core people uh, to our organization uh, beyond this of course now we are uh, uh, just in the last few months uh, the amount of um, interest we are generating in the media is now picking up because now we are not only just talking about problems but we are showing solutions we have solved many things without being in the system we are taking on uh, issues so even after this you know i have a call with a media agency so now we are slowly getting uh earned uh, media uh, from uh, different channels who are showcasing our work so that is another way the other way is through uh, social media of course which we are very young on because social media we think is a different ball game and largely the issues that we talk about right like uh, garbage road city management by default they are not interesting issues like say uh, sports or celebrities and things like that so um, we are now spending different kind of efforts there on how to spin these issues such that we make it interesting and generate more on social media but even without that almost half my team of youngsters all come from social media so that is definitely been one of the um, ways in which we find fellow problem solvers in the city and the last way is through our organized and uh, technological approach to communication so in all our different events that we have done at the different ward levels we have databases that uh, we are not buying but rather we are collecting first hand over the last 2 years we have interacted with so many people running into you know thousands almost lakhs uh, who at different points we have either done something for them like help them register as voters or solve their issues or we have kind of um, done events which they have attended awareness events which they have attended so to all these people we are systematically reaching out and organizing so of course it is a learning experience these are the few ways in which we are doing it very honestly i will tell you uh, if we had the funds right we could have done outreach like putting up big billboards and tv ads and all of that we are not in that position right now so now we are not too bothered about it we are that is not letting us stop uh, doing our outreach work in any way so we will continue to do it and i'm sure that um, we'll get more and more ideas along the way we'll learn more about what works what doesn't and we can only grow from here so that's the idea Yes, Rishi, I am seeing the spark in your ideas, right? And as you have said, you are an amalgamation of small, small problems that's happening all across Bangalore, right? But this is going to be your first election that you are going to contest this party of yours. Correct. Yeah, but uh, I also want to have a word of caution. And uh, the case study that I am doing done for Bangalore when I am comparing it to other cities is the uh, people of Bangalore are much more educated when it comes to the other states, right? Because uh, you said like small, small ideas the people are raising. back here in delhi and bangalore doesn't has a migration issue as big as uh, that of delhi even that if it has a uh, migration migration issue that's a educated population that is coming back here in Correct. delhi uh, the somebody i was talking to and he said that you know everybody is aware of the problem and yet nobody mm. wishes to address the problem because mm. the food bank that chooses the person that is representing delhi is very different from what comes right so cool. i'm glad that you are going to fight the big fishes but what you have behind is the passion in your eyes and the educated population that is behind you that will see the spark in you and god god wish because for the 10000 crore rupee budget that is going to be there in the bangalore there are going to be people who are going to spend more than 10000 crores to win those elections right and that's always happening uh, absolutely and we see it the good thing is it's slightly on the decline because you know we are in a municipal area like an urban area generally the average uh education level is increasing generally the number of people you can just buy with money is reducing but still all of that exists it's all there so you're right we will have to fight the uh, big fishes but one interesting thing if i may share with you when we go and talk to people uh, right and we are going door to door uh, i myself have visited around 1000 houses um, which is almost uh, 20, 30% 40% in the area almost in every um, uh, road just like that all of our members do that um we're trying to really listen to people and see how they respond to this idea it's not like we thought about this idea and we thought we'll just uh, go ahead with it but people are responding to it and you know um, uh, you know when we tell them that uh, we are not against them but we are for them the response is brilliant so when i go i tell people that uh, look as a party 
we are not against you your core belief your ideology if you want to vote for so and so person as your prime minister please go ahead and do in fact many people in our party might also be doing the same thing that you do if you want so and so chief minister or so and so person as your mla please go ahead and vote for them we are not against you don't change your beliefs and your party for us but when it comes to local elections if there is a pothole on the road in front of your house if there is a garbage problem next to your house if you have a drainage problem in your locality will the prime minister come and solve it for you no will your mla or chief minister be able to come and solve it for you no they are doing other things they have been given different work by the constitution but it's us youngsters people who belong to this area energetic people localites who care just about this area and nothing greater we are the people who will solve it for you so for that you have to give us the opportunity and when we say this it resonates with people because they know we are not against them we don't uh, take names of any politicians if you can see even in this interview i don't talk about any party any individuals it's all about the system how we can make the system better and when people say that these are not people coming with a negative attitude or against any party they are not they feel like these are guys, these guys are not against us but rather these guys are for us so that's the feeling we are hoping to build on so have you guys chosen all your 198 candidates or are you when are uh, you no because there is a... only two months so are you when are you going to finalize so the interesting thing is municipal elections are a very different ball game and very challenging again not everyone might know but at this level we will have reservations uh, for different categories uh, castes and women much more than the state and national level so in the bbmp we will have 50% reservation for obcs st uh, sc we will also have 50% reservation for women and the thing is all of these reservation categories for the wards will be announced only about uh, uh, one month before the election so nobody can announce candidates for particular ward so in my own ward i can't tell you that i am going to contest here because it may become reserved for say an obc women category uh, to whom i clearly don't belong so what we are doing instead at bnp is not going candidate level we roughly know who are our change makers in different areas and uh, we are building the teams but in every ward we are building a corporate team uh, where we comprise people from all classes all backgrounds a uh, socio economic this caste whatever it is everyone's working together only when the election comes will we be able to say that so and so person will contest in so and so ward so right now we are um, building these corporate teams and our leaders are kind of taking our ideology to everyone in the area so have you chosen a seat for yourself or of uh, what potentially we can be your seat no as i said it will totally depend on the reservation so i know that um, uh, i am not uh, constraining my work yourself, right you said that you have visited thousands Sorry. of houses so far so if... in my area yes so when i was building the ward in my area i have done that but that was more of a study to see what do people think about our ideology so when we talk to them you know are they open willing to it so uh, i myself you, have not been so restrained to do your public outreach i mean are you going house, house to house when are you going house to house or uh, what is the time for is it early morning afternoon evening how are you doing it please tell me uh, generally we do um, it on the weekends because that is when people are there or e- in the evenings on uh, weekdays uh, but that being said we are also uh, looking at um, where are the different uh, meetings associations that happen in the area so there we can go and talk to people then we have a door to door um, you know surveys going on even uh, information distribution leaflets that we are doing where we are saying we are not promoting ourselves but we are adding value we look to add value in every interaction we have with the citizen so that's been happening these are some different ways in which it's happening and i myself because i'm one of the few people who are uh, kind of um, you know at the forefront trying to convince other leaders to join and take the ideology forward i am traveling within the entire city so in, in some sense uh you know if we are able to find a good candidate in every ward then i don't even need to contest right but the reality is that we don't have so many youngsters uh who are kind of up there so definitely i want to do my part for the city as well but the good news is we have been finding in almost 155 wards we more or less know who's the person who can uh, contest there because they've been doing good work 155 out of 198 but nothing hard and fast because reservation can change things can change here and there so what is your goal how much are you expecting by the end result how much do you think is going to be a good number if you win um for uh, this election 
uh, you know the other interesting thing is the wards are looking like they are going to change so if you had asked me you know a while back i might have taken a guess but now the wards are changing from 198 to 243 and there will also be a delimitation uh, that is going to be happening so it's a time of a lot of uncertainty for us so we are just focusing on building the uh, team and not thinking about the election and the wards because we don't know the voter numbers how the population is going to align so our vote bank is generally uh, middle class to educated class to uh, people who live in apartments people who live in society we don't know how these numbers are going to reorganize in uh, many different wards so one thing i want to tell you for sure is the next to next election we want to win the council so that is something we are very confident in our goal for this election we are still not sure we think that in about 50 wards we can give um, uh, you know in, in 100 wards we want to give a very strong fight and we are hoping we can win 50 wards but a lot can change after the delimitation so let's see so rishi since you have these idea you have these aspirations you guys are a rising force like a fireball that is about to be shining right what are the challenges or secret problems that you guys are facing from other political parties but because you know that they are keeping a watch on you they are not going to just let you go and come and defeat them right nobody's going to let that happen right what are the challenges that you are facing and how are you guys are going to come them any incident of uh, people trying to come to you or scare you away if it's happened um, so I don't think we've had, uh, um, you know, many instances of people uh, asking us, to, you know, either uh, threats or anything like that, because one reason is it's also a little bit uh, outdated of people to think that, okay, in the movies, how it happens, there's going to be a lot of like pressure. And especially in the city, in Karnataka, it happens. I know because I have done election campaigning and worked as uh, a consultant outside in the rural areas in Hubli, Darwad and all. There it happens. In Bangalore, it's very less. That's one point. The other thing is, there are many challenges. Uh, we have some external challenges and they are, for example, if we want to do good work and we are out of the system, those who are in the system, like the local uh, authorities and all, might be instructed by the uh, MLAs of the other parties saying that don't work with them, don't solve their problems. Um, so sometimes we meet that resistance where they know that we are capable of representing people's issues, giving solutions, but sometimes the authorities have to implement it. Being outside the system, we can't implement those solutions. So sometimes the local authorities are instructed not to work with us. But uh, yeah, we do face these issues once in a while, but wherever possible, we build personal rapport. We tell them, look, don't give us credit. We don't want any political credit for this. Just solve the problem. We'll tell whoever gave us the problem that it's solved. So we find ways to work around it, but this is a big challenge that Every time someone joins our team, they face some resistance of not being able to do much because you're still not inside the system. Uh, and that is one. The other um, challenge is mostly um, internal. So it's not like a problem that other parties give us because our party volunteer base and the other party's volunteer base are actually very different. So there is very little intersection that, uh, you know, some other parties can come take our volunteers or scare them or threaten them or something because we are actually very disjoint from each other. But the challenge with our kind of volunteer base is uh, generally people are sometimes are in their comfort zone. So we have to push them a little bit to go out, uh, talk to uh, someone, uh, kind of go out on the ground. Not everyone is comfortable doing that because we are all at the end of the day, civic change makers, activists, but not really politicians. So teaching our members, our leaders, our volunteers, how to act and behave as politicians is another challenge that we face. Uh, I can really connect uh, with what you are saying, Rishi. Acha, there's one thing I really wanted to ask. Now that you guys are all very bright minds, right? And bright minds don't seem to get very well along themselves, right? Because mm -hmm. somebody's having some idea, even Thomas Edison and other guys, you know. So if there are intra-party fluids or you know not getting well how do you guys like you know seem to uh, arrive to a conclusion as to what is to be done uh, is that happening democratically or how do you guys do it you hit it on the head in fact uh, to avoid all such issues we started off itself with our charter everything is democratic um, we have different committees for even conflict resolution uh, and uh, you know uh, it gives a lot of pride to all our party members knowing that their vote and say on certain issues is exactly the same as the founder of the party. Can you believe it? So when we say that our corporator teams choose the candidates in my area, for example, I have built a team of say 35 core uh, team members. When the election comes, when we know the category and all of that, whoever the candidate is, it's this group of core team members who are going to vote and choose who the candidate will be. So our own party founder has got no say 
in which candidate will contest in my area so that's the core uh, belief and even on some administrative matters right we were having a huge debate on what should be our symbol what should be our branding okay and for all of that we had a core uh, committee meet of 100 people where we did voting we did voting people gave their arguments and ultimately including the founder including everyone else voted on what they think should be our uh, symbol which of course i can't yet give out publicly because it's not decided until the election comes uh, but even for issues like that we have internal democracy so that way it's a very good uh, exercise and we have not had issues uh, so far we may have in the future i don't want to be too idealistic about it but for that we have a charter we have a committee so hopefully when that time comes when we are big enough to have internal problems we can deal with it you once again and we started with this question that you said you know how you have a internal democracy in the party which takes all the major decisions yet you don't want to disclose your party symbol right i i have an entire video on party symbols how party symbols you know are very effective i hope you are doing the right thing by choosing the party symbols the one which reflects yeah the- in fact uh, please do share it with me would love to see that but we had a deliberation but the thing is because we are not a national party right we uh, will not yet be allocated that symbol so anyone else can apply for the same symbol so we have to keep it confidential until the election okay so uh, just that now we are talking i want to say how the symbol of congress party was chosen right i mean uh, the new congress party that was chosen by indira gandhi that was uh, congress i right she had to choose a symbol for her party before that the symbol of the congress party was a cow and a calf right mm-hmm. so uh, mrs indira gandhi was a disciple of devariya baba and she just had come from emergency and she was not having a very good time so she went to devariya baba and asked his help so i don't know what devariya baba told to her devariya baba ne unhe haath dikhaya tha from that she picked up that maybe she should put the hand as the symbol of the party right and since then mm-hmm. as fables say i'm not sure how correct it is but yes something that reflects with the mood of the people should be the choice of your absolutely okay now uh, because a lot of people who will be watching this would want to contribute in some sense so on what platform are you guys asking for contributions and how do you uh, raise crowd funding is it going to be physical or how do you do crowd funding i mean to begin with crowd funding and then how how do you do the crowd funding in fact our um, entire um, website is live on namabnp.org and we take donations also 100% digital and only through that platform so uh, the interesting thing is even people like me make a recurring contribution to the party every month as and when i can or my parents can just like all the other people who contribute to make the party uh, grow and how we do this crowd funding is i told you about all our volunteers right the people on our networks thousands of people we reach out to them Uh, every month or every quarter with an update of how much our operational expenses were uh, in some sense we are also an organization right so we have a few people working full time and how we are you know using our money for our campaigns we send them a report and we say that we are looking to raise so much more funds please contribute and just internally it's like it's so beautiful because every one of the 20000 volunteers feel like i'm playing a part and this is mine in some way so if just people contribute 100 rupees to 1000 rupees every month uh, which for most people it's less than one meal that you go outside on a saturday night right so that's the amount people contribute every month or every quarter and that's how we sustain so this is how we are doing crowd funding uh, we are not uh, going out to people we don't know asking for money but we tell people about our cause once people are connected with our cause uh, once in a while we ask them to make small uh, contribution so now and it's all on our website Okay, your website is <clears throat> nammabnp.org. That's the website. Okay, since you guys have started a political party, what is your target population? I'm sure you guys might have identified your target population. Correct. So our uh, target population for the short term and long term is very different. In the long term, uh, we are absolutely clear about it. We are here to be a political party for. bengaluru and the entirety of bengaluru so we want to uh, be able to contest every vote yes that is an idealistic stance but in the long term that is our goal whether someone's upper class lower class different caste migrant resident youngster elderly senior citizen women whoever it is we want to show them that we are a party for them so this is in the long term in the short term we have to be practical absolutely right for the first election so our vote bank or our target population are generally mainly 
um, different categories. One is youngsters, people who are voting for the first time, who want to see something different, who want to support us. So our party is the only party which is going to have uh, dozens of people under 30 contesting municipal elections. No other big party will even give that platform to youngsters. So obviously youngsters is one target audience. Uh, even female voters will be another target audience because uh, in our party, come what may, we will not uh, you know, put up proxy candidates in the female candidate roles. We all know how it is. Even in Bangalore, it happens when the category changes, the male person, whoever is there in a party, he'll field his wife or his mother or his daughter for the election. It happens everywhere. We are going to stand against that. And we've been doing a lot of awareness on uh, the women representing themselves and the importance of that. So women is another important vote bank. Uh, that aside, uh, in general, uh, people who uh, uh, reside, the educated classes across the city is our vote bank. People who reside in different communities, active in the civic space, they are our vote bank. Uh, so let's see how it goes. Uh, based on this, we may choose which are our top priority wards where we have to concentrate our resources. But once we have done that, we want to reach out to everybody. The thing is, uh, even people belonging to lower classes are very important for us. And we have done a lot of campaigns and programs for them but we know that idealistically um, sometimes these are the classes that kind of accept money for votes and the behavior that they have had for decades will be very hard to change overnight so instead of um, you know trying to do that we'll try our best uh, efforts we'll show them what we can do for them but we won't count on it so we have to be practical that way and we hope that by the time the next election comes we would have worked long enough and shown people um, what we can do and we can earn their trust instead and gradually change the you know money for vote mentality of people in the long term that's a very practical idea i'm sure uh, that you guys are choosing right so uh, rishi i just want to conclude by saying that it was such an honor to have spoken to you to know what you guys are doing and how you are sparking a revolution from the down south and may this experiment succeed you know because uh, the app moment uh, I may say, you know, it was a revolution of the youth. It was for the youth, by the youth, and everything. But it failed miserably the aspirations of the youth, right? So I, I wish that this experiment of yours uh, revolves and evolves in all directions and sparks a change for other leaders in various cities to start small, not if big, to start small just by words, right? And you know, I'm so glad to have spoken to you, Rishi. Thank you for your. No, views. thank you so much. And your your ideas are in fact exactly the same as mine even on AAP what it tried to do and hopefully where we can be different is because of our ceiling in ambition however small you start right when you're successful and you try to increase your ambition to grow everywhere you lose your core beliefs your core philosophy you can't maintain quality and that's unfortunately what we have uh, seen so far even in Karnataka and Bangalore so hopefully um, this is an experiment as you said and because we are exclusively focused and we have no higher ambition I'm confident that, you know, success no one can predict in the political space. We all know that. But I'm confident that our principles will not be, uh, you know, affected in the long run. So that's something I'm hoping on. How are you guys doing your research and development and strategy thinking and professional help? Because see, you might have the volunteers. That's an educated volunteer, right? But suppose, uh, how are you guys researching? How are you planning your campaigns? You will need professional help, right? And who decides your brochures uh, and all that stuff? Correct. So in our party, interestingly, uh, the people who have come together. So the founder is a uh, is someone who actually uh, studied in IIM Bangalore, was in the corporate field for 20 years. And then he decided uh, that the civic space is where it needs focus. He worked for almost 10 years in the civic space, built a civic organization, which was an apartment federation. He grew that from zero to, you know, thousand apartments covering more than three lakh people. So that's the background of just the founder. Uh, one of our other core members is a PhD from the Indian Institute of Science. She heads our research and manifesto. She is a specialist in solid waste management. We have a few people like me who come from a policy and strategy uh, background. Uh, we have people, our head of um, uh, tech and data was the ex-CTO for Airtel. And now he is kind of spending full time uh, on our cause. So we actually have a very good core team set up when it comes to uh, research, strategy, planning, data, numbers. Uh, as I told you even earlier, our weakness is actually not that segment at all. Our weakness is how do we find volunteers at scale on the ground who can go to every house, every road. So that is where we are focusing on building people right now. See, I am very impressed, but I am uh, wanting to say that, you know, uh, uh, hey, you guys will win or may not win. But what you guys will evolve will be, as Robert Green says, 
that a per person at his late 60s says that you know he had the potential he didn't do but you guys will evolve certainly as individuals who are doing what they wanted to do right and and that's thank you so much mayank ji and and how do you guys connect over zoom do you guys connect over zoom every evening or how do you guys like intra you cannot meet uh, every day right because you guys are that's right. and working everywhere so how do you do your online cwc meetings do you do a chintan shiver <laughs> we may not call it that but of course we meet every day on zoom um it it changes every week or every month we set a different time such that people who uh, are making uh, compromises don't have to be doing it every time so for example this i can disclose today we meeting at 8 pm so for these two weeks we are meeting at 8 pm before that our meetings were at uh, uh, 1 pm in between so people would take out time in their lunch slot before that there were meetings early in the morning so we do these online uh, round up meetings where the representatives from every ward join in uh, for uh, half an hour every day and we do physical meetings on the weekends uh, where we meet in person so even this sunday we are having a very big kick off volunteer meetings with more than 100 people uh, of each area in a few zones so that is something we do on the weekends see i have an idea for you you know since you are absolutely please. with absolute modern ideas why not call your meetings not chintan shiver but like baby shower you call them chintan chintan shower or brainstorming political <laughs> showers right <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Like brainstorming ideas right nice i'll definitely share it uh, this evening <laughs> <laughs> that was just thank you thank you so much wonderful thank you for giving me time and you were really as important as all the big member of parliament said to and even more thank you once again rishi and i will stay connected to you and provide you with all my best uh, possible very help. very grateful for the opportunity please do please pass on the word and whenever you are in bangalore i hope we can meet yes and i will contribute to the best of my ability as well thank you thank you so much bye thank you once again